Not every question in the density altitude section of the test will give you the pressure altitude. You'll have to find the pressure altitude on your own. And that's what this next question in the study guide makes us do, is it will give us information so that we can find the pressure altitude. Okay? So right now we're not looking for density altitude, we're just going to look for the pressure altitude in feet. And here's how you do it. Here's the question. And it says, determine the pressure altitude, right? We're going to find this diagonal line here. Determine the pressure altitude, and they give you indicated altitude of 1380 feet. That means your plane is sitting at 1,380 feet of elevation. And the altimeter setting is at 28.22, and it's at standard temperature. So let's find the pressure altitude. Okay, the way we do it is we follow a very specific set of calculations. Right now, you are to memorize how to do this. We will go over this again when we're doing our um, study group, but I want you to follow this step by step. And once you've learned it step by step, you'll be able to understand what we're actually doing. What I do is the following. Always use a clean sheet of paper, always use a pencil. What I do is I write down A, B, and C. Okay, once I've written out A, B, and C, I write down into A the, the uh, altimeter setting that they gave us in the question, which is 28.22. So I write 28.22. Now, I go to the pressure altitude conversion chart and I get as close to that number as I can. So let's look. Here's 28.1, here's 28.2, here's 28.3. So there's no 28.22. If the question had just asked for 28.2, then I could have just looked across to the table and found the conversion factor to be 1,630 feet. But it isn't. It's somewhere between, it's, the actual number is, that we're looking for is 28.22. We're looking for the conversion factor associated with that. But there is no 28.22. There's 28.2 and there's 28.3. So we have to interpolate. The, the answer, for the conversion factor I'm looking for is somewhere between 1,630 feet and 1,533 feet. And that's what we have to do. We have to interpolate. We have to find out where 28.22 would land. In other words, what conversion factor is associated with not 28.2, but 28.22. And here's how you do it. You're creating a little table here on the right. The first number here is the, in the question, they give you the uh, altimeter setting of 28.22. Down here, you're going to look at the chart and put on the number, look for the number that's the closest number to it, which is 28.20 and 28.30. In other words, you're going to find the two numbers that the number we're looking for falls between. So 28.22 falls between 28.2 and 28.3. Pretty simple so far. The next thing you want to do, and I'm going to just focus now on the paper, the calculation paper. The next thing we want to do is we want to write down, I put an arrow like this and an arrow like this, and you want to write down what the conver conversion factors are for those two numbers that our number falls between. So for 28.2, the conversion factor is 1,630 feet. So you're at 1,630 feet. The conversion factor for 28.3 is 1,533 feet. Okay, very good. The next thing we do, and the stuff you just memorize, is you want to find the difference between these two numbers. And how do you do that? Just subtract one from the other. So in this case, it's 1,630 
minus 1,533 gives you the answer of 97 feet. Okay, so there's a 97 foot difference between these two. Just keep that up on the paper. Don't worry about it for now. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take A minus B. Don't worry why, it's just something you're always going to do. And then you're going to do C minus B. You do this in every question, you'll always get the right numbers, even if you don't know what's going on. By the way, I encourage you to learn what's going on, but right now you need to fly the test. You need to pass the test. So if you just learn how to manipulate these numbers and you do it a few times, you'll remember this. You'll get the right answers every time. So what do I mean by A minus B? Well, here's A, 28.22 minus B, which is 28.20. Now, use, even though we all know we can do this by hand, I'm going to do it by hand now. Do not do these by hand when you're on the test because there's too much room for error, especially when you're dealing with decimals. But I know for sure that uh, 28.22 minus 28.20 is definitely going to be 0 0.02. So 0 0.02 is the answer of the A minus B, this minus this. The next thing you want to do is C minus B. So you write down C, which is 28.30 minus B, which is 28.20. And again, do it on your calculators, but I know that the answer is 0 0.10. Okay, why these are important are, is not important right now. That you do this every time and come up with this number and this number is important because you're going to need those soon. Okay, once you've done that, what you're going to do is you're going to take this number 97 and you're going to divide that by this number here, 